The injured rabbi from Poway was filled with emotion as he remembered Lori Gilbert Kay, one of the congregants who was killed at the synagogue. This horrific, terrible event that has occurred here, in my own interpretation, Lori took the bullet for all of us. She died to protect all of us. She didn't deserve to die. She's such a kind, sweet-hearted, just a good human being. I do know that this is Lori. This is her legacy, and her legacy will continue. Joining us now is Lori's friend of 25 years, Dr. Ronit Lev. Dr. Lev, thank you so much for being here. We're so sorry for your loss. We know how horrible these past 48 hours have been for you, and we really appreciate you being here to talk about your community, your congregation, and your friend Lori. What, you know, Lori sounds so special from everything that we've heard from her daughter, from the rabbi. What can you share with us about your friend? So uh, thank you so much. I um, uh, really appreciate the kindness uh, of everybody and, and really happy to be here and important for me to tell and let the whole world know Lori Kay, my best friend, the second mother to my children. We raised our children together here at this congregation of uh, Chabad of Poway. Um, anybody who knew her, and she reached many lives um, around the world. Countless people that may not even know her name now need to know Lori Kay um, because she, she was um, a most amazing person. She, she was human. She had false and positive aspects. She's had ups and downs in her life, like like all of us. But no matter what, in the worst and her darkest days, and she's had, you know, trauma in her life, she always, always looks at the positive. Before coming here, I came and, and took some of the many books she has all over her house. And this is, this is her. This is, be happy. You are doing a freaking good job. 14,000 things to be happy about. And, and, and that was, that's Lori, always looking at the positive, always giving. Anyone who knows her, knows her someone who's giving. As I was looking in her car, and I found greeting cards. I found gift cards. I found an Easter basket full of things to give to someone else. The people she knew were giving. I've traveled around the whole world, and she, she loved that and, and, and admired from afar. And so before every trip, she would give me a check or two checks, each for $100 or more. And I'd be all over the world. And she said, Roni, go find some charity that's, mm -hmm. that, that, that needs it. And I told this story to another friend. She goes, oh, she did this for me, and she did this for me. Oh my so God. She's, she's done. She is the symbol of random acts of kindness. And, and the more we are talking about her, the more I hear about it. My, my mom, she, she took my mom to, uh, to breakfast the other day. She loves her coffee at Einstein Bagel and gets a bagel, and she gets two. And uh, my mom goes, oh, no, no, I don't need. And she goes, no, 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 don't bother. There's some homeless person next, and she is giving her extra coffee and, and bagel for someone else. She, she, um, she's sometimes late. And, and why is she late? And she goes, oh, because I had to stop by this person's house or that person's house. Um, she collected people. She loved people. Mm. And we're standing here in, in front of my synagogue, a house of worship. We believe in God. We believe God is good. And if God picked Lori Kay, if God picked Lori Kay, then he did this for a reason. And the reason is good because we believe God is good. And Lori is a person who can spread goodness in this world. She's making us stronger as a Jewish people. We will not let anti-Semitism stop us in any way. We know there's evil in this world, but it is nothing compared to the good we have. And we see that now, especially in her demise. And we see the goodness in Poway, in San Diego. She loved the media. She would want to get her mes message heard. She, I wish she was alive to see this, <laughs> um, because this would be her, her, her message. And, and her message is to be random acts of kindness, to be good, regardless of the faith, regardless of who you are, anywhere around this planet. Wow. We are, we have, we are much, much better people, and we see that in our law enforcement, in the medical community, in the vigils, and people of all faiths that we've seen here um, come together to remember Lori Kay, my best friend, and to 
send a message uh, of good and unity to our world. What a beautiful message, Dr. Love. What a beautiful message and how well you have channeled her spirit for all of us. And you know, the story goes that when the gunman came into the synagogue, it was Lori who put her own life in jeopardy and stepped towards the gunman to shield the rabbi. How is that possible? Why would she be capable of doing something like that? When you say that, it, it pains me because I know that that's Lori. And anybody who knew Lori knew that, of course, that's Lori who stood in front of the rabbi. And the rabbi told me when I saw him being rolled into surgery, let people know that Lori died saving my life. And that was his words to me as he was rolled up to the operating room. And, um, and it sounds like, why would someone do that? And anybody who knew that would know, and that was Lori. And that's how Lori made the ultimate sacrifice, perhaps to send this message of unconditional love, which is the words that Lori would use. How's her family doing today? Not, not good. Uh, her, um, her daughter, uh, Hannah, is uh, an amazing, amazing young woman. She, you will see, she's a, a, a replica of her mother. And uh, in, in terms of good and kindness, and, and I hope she gets to, to speak to you someday, but she had a, a terrible night. And, uh, uh, and, and so is her father. Her husband are are not well at this time. They appreciate their support. If I had to speak on her behalf, it'd be thank you, thank you so much to to everyone, and hugs to everyone. But she's not in a in a, in a position to to be on camera. Of course, of course, we understand. I mean, I I think one of the most one of the many affecting moments of this story is knowing that Lori's husband is a doctor. And when he heard that there was a shooting at the synagogue, he raced to help people. And he didn't know that it was yeah. his wife who um, was close to death. And when he saw her and realized that it was she that he would have to be treating, that he collapsed as well just from the shock of it. I mean, it's all so horrible just hearing the, the aftermath of all of it. It, it, our, our synagogue is blessed. We are blessed with a lot of physicians in our synagogue. We have the Stop the Bleed bag, you know, that a trauma uh, area should have. Um, so we're, we're equipped. Um, and it's not the first time someone, or even Howard, um, a husband has, has come to rescue in the synagogue. Um, after, you know, 30 years here, things, things happen um, and, and we're prepared. So he did uh, run to the scene when he heard a very loud, that's the biggest description I hear about what happened there, how loud um, the gunfire was. And so he was told that we need to ha your help, um, uh, Dr. K, and he ran to the scene and it was after they put the stickers of the disabled that he saw that it was Lori and he fainted. Our synagogue is also blessed with uh, amazing bravery. We are not sitting ducks here waiting to, for someone to, to, we know we're a potential target, we know anti-Semitism exists, but we're ready to protect ourselves um, as, as synagogues throughout the world should be able to do. And we have, have people who ran to the gunfire to subdue and to chase the gunmen away, to protect the children and to protect the rest of the congregants. And I, I'm just amazed by the heroism and, and, and proud uh, of the people uh, yeah. uh, at Chabad of Poway. So are we, but I just wanna ask you about that. I mean, that feeling of knowing that you could be targeted. That, that off-duty Border Patrol agent, was he regular, who ended up shooting at the gunman and uh, hitting his car to the point where the gunman had to surrender. Was he often there at the synagogue because you all felt or had heard other threats? No, the, um, the off-duty Border Patrol agent is a member of our community. He's a member of Chabad of Poway. We have uh, retired military who are members of our congregation. Um, 
and uh, this was a big day. This was the last day of Passover. This was uh, a day that people, the, the reason Lori came to the synagogue, um, she was celebrating my daughter's graduation on Friday night. Um, on the first day of Passover, I was at her house, and she and her husband led the most wonderful um, Passover Seder. And, um, and on Friday night, we celebrated a most wonderful uh, Sabbath meal together, but she was rushing to be at the synagogue on Saturday to say the mourner's prayer for her mother. She recently lost her mother, and she wanted to say this prayer. It would have been the first time in her life to have to say the Kaddish prayer, the mourning for the dead. She was very anxious, and that's why she was in the hallway. She was sitting, she was standing, which was typical of Lori. She was, she, you know, was nervous about the prayer she was about to say. Um, and she, uh, she never got to say it, and she will be meeting her mother in, in person. Um, the rabbi that you, you raced to the hospital, and you, as you said, saw the rabbi being wheeled into surgery, he, he lost um, fingers as a result of this. He also is very strong. And so you, I mean, you all personify the strength with which you will come back and practice your faith, and it is inspiring. 